Hey everyone, my name is Adora Namigate, and today's video is about the pressure in the media industry to change your name. So, as you heard, my last name is Namigate. It is nine letters long. It is a long name, it is not short, and it's not the easiest name in the world to pronounce, at least for Americans. The reason I'm making this video is because a couple of friends sent me a request from a podcaster and reporter named Rachel Bell who is doing a podcast episode about this and I'm going to be interviewed for her podcast. I'll end up linking that in the description box below. And the reason that she's making this post is because of a local reporter in Seattle named Simni Kim. And I'm going to read to you a Facebook post that she wrote that has over a thousand likes. So let me pull it up here. The post says, and it's pretty long, I'll also screenshot it. I've been processing what's happened to the Asian American community across the country. I'm sad. I'm angry. I'm upset. But to denounce the horrific violence facing the community, I would also have to address the issue of discrimination, where it all begins, that, when left unchecked, can escalate into extreme violence. And I also must admit that I have been complicit. In 2015, I moved to Seattle to work at Cairo 7, but here's what many of you don't know. For my entire career before Seattle, I used my maiden name, Simni Chuan. But the news director at the time said I would have to change my name because it would be too difficult for a Monday to Friday anchor. No name change, no job. I struggled. To change it after more than 10 years in the business was strange. It's the name I had when I came to this country, the name I kept when I was naturalized as a U.S. citizen, and the name I never once hesitated to use when starting off in the business. It's also identifiably Cambodian, which makes me very proud. To change it felt like I would be denying my heritage. But you know how this story ends. I landed on Kim because it's my father's first name, and I convinced myself it was still a way to pay tribute to him and to my family. But I felt uncomfortable because as identifiable as Chuan is Kamar, I knew that I was taking on a name that is distinctly Korean. In my inner circles, I would even joke that I played a Korean woman on TV. Deep down, I knew that this incident is just as anti-Asian as the kids on the playground who refuse to learn or even make fun of your name. The only difference is those same kids have grown up and can make powerful decisions about your future, who works and who doesn't. Be Asian to check off the diversity box, but don't be too Asian or the wrong kind of Asian. It was the beginning of a job where I had already compromised myself, and when that boss abruptly demoted me to weekend mornings, suddenly, I was stuck with this name, and the reason I changed it, gone. I struggled to share this because as much as I fight for other people's voices to be heard, I've been long used to having mine silenced. I've bit my tongue to appease people for much too long— I also struggled to share this because if I had not agreed to change my name on air, I wouldn't have come and grown my beautiful family here. To speak out against it, it would appear that I am speaking out against the trajectory of my life, and that couldn't be further from the truth. I want my kids to be proud of who they are. I want them to stand up for themselves. We are not a monolith. Okay. So again, that was... <clears throat> Let me straighten myself again. Reading the Facebook post reminded me of my own story. Fortunately, mine ended up differently than Simni's. Um, I wasn't in a position where my job hinged on whether or not I was willing to change my name, but I definitely understand the pressure. So my first job was at a commercial television station, and after I'd already gotten the job, signed my contract and everything, um, I was asked, hey, would you be willing to change your name to something that would be more relatable to our audience. So my full first name is Adora Bell, which can often t turn into puns like adorable, as you can see with my YouTube name. So, um, you know, my boss suggested, okay, we wouldn't want to call you Adora Space Bell as last name because that would be punny. And it might be strange if you were at a fire or something, people are like, oh, she's so adorable. but. What if we called you Bell Adora? That way you can still maintain your name, but at the same time, you know, the phrase relatable to our viewers, relatable to our viewers, that's what was used. Um, and so I thought, okay, I didn't really know that this was an industry norm, 
And so I just said, okay, let me talk to my parents about it. My boss was like, no problem. So I contacted my parents and they were like, what? We don't want you to be Belladora. How will anyone know you're Ugandan? And now I'm like, isn't that kind of the point? Anyway, so my parents were not having it. They were like, you are a Ugandan and your name is Nami Gade. And how's anyone going to know that you're Ugandan if you don't use it? So that made me not really want to make the name change. Um, and then also I was at a holiday party with some of my colleagues and they were like, one of them was like, why, why should she change her name? She can be whatever she wants, you know? So like I said, I wasn't really pressured to the point of my job being on the line. I wasn't even really pressured. I was just asked to make that change. Um, but obviously I was asked to make that change in hopes that I would. Anyway, I went back to my boss and I said, you know what? Thank you for the suggestion. I thought about it. Oops, sorry for shaking the frame. After talking to a few people, I'm just going to stick with Adora Nami Gunde. Um, That's what I'd gone in. That's what I'd gone as, as a writer in college. And I just continued using that name. So that was the end of that problem. I made a pronouncer for the anchors at the station so they could learn how to pronounce my name. And eventually they did. So it was all good. Um, for reasons unrelated to this story, I ended up deciding that I wanted to leave commercial news and work in public media. So once I went over to public media, I learned about this whole trope about NPR names. Um, there's a whole stereotype or story that, I mean, a lot of different people lean into, NPR leans into it themselves, that NPR people just have these like wildly unique names. So, you know, there are people on NPR like Scott Simon, people like Rachel Martin, people like Steve Inskeep, but there are also names like Magna Chakrabarty, Ophabia Quistarkton, Lakshmi Singh, and that kind of latter half of names is where my name falls into. So yeah, I hear friends be like, friends in my area say, oh my gosh, your name is such an NPR name. Your name is such an NPR name. And so when I started to look into the trope, I just was realizing, oh my gosh, um, a lot of us in media with these unique names are asked to change them. And so you wonder, how many people in commercial media have a name that's quote unquote ethnic or something that you just don't know about because of situations like Simney's where they were asked to change their name. Um, it's kind of cool that we live in a society that embraces diversity a lot more and that my name is something that's now celebrated. Whereas I once kept my name in fear and knowing that I wasn't necessarily making my bosses happy by doing that, I can now just proudly use this name. And honestly, the best thing about having my name remain the way it actually is on the air is that when other Ugandans hear me on the radio, they know that Nami Gade is a Ugandan name. And if my stories ever make it on national, which happens once in a while, then I'll get emails or tweets or phone calls from Ugandans all over the country just saying, oh, hey, you know, I heard Nami Gade and I just like tapped the person next to me and screamed, oh my gosh, she's Ugandan. And there's that's just such a great feeling. I can't describe what an amazing feeling that is. Whenever I am contacted by a Ugandan about the fact that they heard me on NPR National, I just, I feel like a little girl on Christmas. So... Yeah, that's my story. I really appreciate that Sydney Kim had the vulnerability to come out on Facebook and share her story about being pressured to change her name and the fact that her job hinged on it is so sad. Um, but it's really good that she shared her story and that people can be more aware of this. If you are someone who has a more, you know, unique name, quote unquote, this is a question you might be asked if you decide to work in media and you have to know what you're gonna do about it. So again, I was lucky. I was not forced to change my name. My financial status did not change because of my name. That's it. Um, I also wanna shout out my friends who made this outfit possible. Lucy, 
who is moving out of town, love her so much, so sad, gave me this sweater at a little open COVID-19 distance backyard free garage sale that she had. My friend Sam got me these earrings and I bought myself this watch. All right. A quick little detail that I just remembered. Even though NPR has a reputation for being more inclusive with the names, I just want to point out that they're not immune to this stuff either. Once I came across a Facebook post that I was not supposed to see, I don't think pe people who were talking about it realized that I was in this Facebook group, but they were talking about the fact that my name is hard to pronounce and <laughs> that they don't like pronouncing it. So look. I can't make everyone happy, but I'm going to keep going by Adora Namigante regardless.